Amen. She will ignite your passion and bring your purpose to life. Mm. The strategies she shares will take you to higher heights. Improving your energy, spirituality, your well-being. A better mindset for your journey to build a better you. Simply Central Show. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Simply Central Show. I am so super excited. We are here in Anaheim, California for the first time filming our show, and we have an amazing guest for you today. And before we get into today's topic, I want to make sure that I ask you guys to like, share, and follow at Simply Central on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, because we will be airing all of our footage there and all of the things we've been doing in, Han in Anaheim, which has been pretty amazing, I must tell you. So I'm here in California and I've returned back to my roots, so to speak, because I used to live here in LA. So for those of you who are wondering a little bit about my background, now you have a little tidbit. I'm not gonna release anything else because I think that's enough. So today's guest, and you have probably seen her on almost every episode of Scandal, which is one of my favorite shows, and many other things. We have Erica Schaefer, and she is a mother, a yogi, an actress, and amongst that, so many other wonderful things, and she's gonna talk to us today. So, welcome, Erica. Thank you for having me. No, thank you for <laughs> being here. You just don't know, I am so super excited to have Aww. you. And you already know, we've talked several mm -hmm. times. So I am so glad that you're here to join the conversation with us and here on Building a Better You because that's the platform of our show. Right, I love that. Yeah, so we are always trying to bring our viewers just some, just some information, experience about your journey and exactly what did you do to build a better you and they kind of get to get a little bit more insight into your life. Mm -hmm. So we'll start with, and this is the question that I know people ask all the time, like, who are you? You know, what do you stand for? All of that good stuff. Because many people may not know who you are, tell them, who are yeah. you? Well, I guess first and foremost, I'm a mom, and that's my best role. Ever. Yeah. And I'm a Southern California native, um, and I love I love to act. Acting is what I do for a living. It's yeah. also very much a big part of who I am. Mm -hmm. But also as a person, I just really want to spread a lot of uh, kindness and yeah. gratitude. Um, I want to always stand up for people that need need a voice, that don't feel like they have a voice. Yeah. Um, that happened a couple of times this week. And uh, mm. I guess that's who I am, is I really want to, I'm there to serve. I, really I love that. I love that. And that's really one of the reasons why I've done this platform is to be of greater service and to add value. We mentor young girls with Girls on the Run Greater Houston, which is amazing. Well, you'll be surprised we have a young girl inside each one of us oh, yeah. and needs to be tended to. Mm -hmm. And then there are young guys out there that have a young boy inside of them. And we forget that sometimes we experience things young in life and those things don't get resolved, they don't get addressed, and we bring them into our adulthood. Yeah. And so Building a Better You addresses those things as well. I mean, we get to share some things. This is, we're not doctors, right? We are here to be kind and to spread a message of gratefulness and then give people tools on how they can do that. So you mentioned that you had a couple of incidents earlier this week. Yeah, it was one of those weeks. Uh, you know, maybe something's in the air. Uh, but could be. It could be. This is California, be. so you don't know what's yeah. in the air, right? Uh, the universal air. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It, it's funny. Well, my daughter's school is working on um, acts of kindness and writing mm. down acts of kindness, things that you have done, things that you want to do, things that you should do, and no. putting all these, you know, um, little flashcards all over the hallways of the school. I love that. Um, and so, you know, we got the email, and, you know, not only are we doing this at school, but doing this um, at home, and 
And so, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, we try to do that every day, but kind mm-hmm. of bringing it back up and making it part of our lives is very important. And there was a little girl at school the other day that was body shamed. Uh, my Ooh. daughter caught a little boy calling her fat. Oh, wow. So I always tell my daughter, and these are 10-year-olds, so I always tell my daughter, if you see anybody being bullied, if you see someone not being treated well, you speak up. Yeah. You say something. And, um, and then I noticed that now that they're in fifth grade, they get a little cautious about telling teachers. Hmm. They will tell us parents, but they get a little cautious about talking to the teachers because they don't want the bully to... Find like, out. Yeah. yeah. So then, hmm. so she tells me, so of course, I get all in an uproar. And... <laughs> <laughs> He's like, wait a minute, what? What happened? Wait a minute, what? Yeah. So... You know, I uh, contact the mom, who I'm friends with, of the girl, and I just, you know, hey, said, hey, I, you know, my daughter told me what happened, and I just want to tell you that um, I, if, if there's anything I can do, and mm-hmm. I, you know, really feel that we should, you know, let the administrators know, and she goes, no, I'm just telling my daughter to ignore it, and that's mm-hmm. where I said, no. Yeah. No, because this little boy becomes a man who does that. Yes. So, and it's not this little boy's fault. He's hearing it somewhere else. He yes. just needs to know mm-hmm. that this is not how you treat girls yes. or anyone. Yes. You know? So, luckily, um, my daughter's um, principal, after I con- called her yesterday, she brought both of them in, mm-hmm. my daughter and the little boy. They talked it out. They she brought your daughter my and the little daughter boy? and the little boy, because my daughter's the one that brought it up to me. Oh, and not the other little girl, because... I didn't mention the little girl's name to the principal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I haven't... I Respectful just, of you. Yeah. Yes. So anyway, yeah, and, it, and, my, and the principal said my daughter was very mature about it, and they, they discussed it, and I asked my daughter, how did it go? And she goes, I, oh, we're friends. It worked out great. He said he's sorry, and hmm. so, you know, I think it... I don't remember doing that at 10. I remember yeah. people calling lots of people names, but I don't recall ever having an administrator okay. have you sit down and talk. It's almost like an arbitration yeah. and mediation <laughs> in, the, in school. That's kind of right. crazy. It's great, though, because your daughter felt like, yeah, I can do this. She didn't say, no, Mom, I don't want to be right. a part of that. So that says a lot about what she's she receiving at home. In, or did I know they were doing it? She was sitting in social studies and someone said, um, you need to go to the office. Oh, yeah. she's like, oh, she's like, oh, snap. So if there had been a precursor to it, she yeah. probably would have opted that. out. Yeah, no, Mom, I don't think I want to. No, you have to do it. She would have yeah. been upset. It's still great, though, that they had the conversation. Mm-hmm. And that he now knows. Now he's yeah. accountable. Mm-hmm. I think that we don't give people the opportunity to be accountable. Right. And bullying happens just too often, and then there's uh, no response. There's silence. Yeah. And that is almost like saying it's okay. And like you said, it starts when they're young, and then they grow up yeah. to think that. And it becomes more than just bullying. It becomes other things, like harassment right. and things like that. And we've seen a lot of that mm-hmm. in uh, in our our current events, yeah. we've seen a lot of that. So it is very, very good that you are teaching that to your daughter. And so now while we're talking about bullying, because we deal like a lot of that with the young girls that we mentor, mm-hmm. bullying and having the words, the verbiage to actually either fight back for yourself, and I don't mean fight back like this, right. I mean to tell someone, no, you're wrong, and what you're saying is inappropriate, and then be okay telling administrators mm-hmm. or teachers, or, and that should be a safe space. Mm-hmm. Now we have it going on in your industry, and it seems more vocal. Like the last few years, we've just been having like a whole rash of incidents, people now being outed, because it was already going on, right? right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So it, they're now being outed. And then we have our president, right, our current president. And he's had his share of allegations, mm-hmm. right? How have you kind of dealt with that in right. this industry? You know, I gosh, I've been in this business for 20 years. And yeah. in the 90s when I started, it was rampant. Yeah. Um, there wa- I haven't seen it uh from firsthand for many years, mm-hmm. but also the older you get, yeah. you get a little more respect and you're not treated that way. So Even the casting couch is not an issue for you Right, then. but yeah. when you're in your 20s and mm-hmm. you're new to town, mm-hmm. it, it happens all the time. Yeah. Um, I feel, I mean, knock on wood. There's none I, in here. I've never oh, wait. been, 
assaulted, <laughs> but I've definitely been harassed. Harassed, yeah. And what's what's interesting to me is we talked about your daughter mm -hmm. and you allowing her to even have that conversation, her having a conversation with her peer. Right. There are a number of young girls that are going through this, and either they're they're not confident or they feel as though this may be the only way and maybe everyone is doing this and I just right. don't know you know and are they standing up for themselves uh, or will they be blackballed because in any business yeah. this happens where someone in power whether it, it I think there's many levels of harassment but Absolutely. anything that is um, unnecessary mm. or um, you know pushed upon you yeah. and you're you're in that position where you need the job or you need to keep the job or you you know you don't say anything yeah. so you just kind of brush it off like yeah. okay well I'm not going to say anything but I'm really really happy now that even that isn't appropriate anymore yeah yeah you, you say something and I think I mean, I love how everyone must be shaking in their boots right now. Yeah. Who hasn't, who ha haven't been called out. Um, you know, it's an awakening, it's mm -hmm. karma, and it's yes, time. Yes, it is that. I mean, if only it had happened 20 years ago. Yeah. But it's yeah. time. Well, I absolutely understand. I know that recent news is Harvey Weinstein. We know that that seems to be the one that's prevalent. It's happened a lot, though. And we're not just talking about the acting industry. We're not no, talking just everywhere. about Hollywood. It's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I can honestly say that I've been sexually harassed at every job that I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Every job. And honestly, I didn't speak up. I didn't speak up and tell anyone. I didn't go to HR, yeah. nothing like that. What I did do was keep my distance from those individuals. Uh, so there was some, you know, changing of how I operated on my part when I really shouldn't have had to. Should have had to walk in guarded all. The yeah, time. you know, yeah. or even change the way that I dressed, even yeah. though I was always a very conservative person. So it's for any woman out there and any man out there, you know, anyone that's being harassed. It's not okay. And it is okay to speak up, and should you not have the strength to do it just yet, then make sure you do something else that protects yourself. Yeah. So I think that's one of the most important things we can share on that topic. And so we're gonna take a break, and we will be right back. Make sure to like, share, and follow, and we will be right back to talk with Erica Shaper. Responding to the devastation in Southern California, people from all over the world flooded the week reduced website, all asking the same question, what about the celebrities? Are they okay? <laughs> Legendary mime Marcel Marceau passed away this week in Paris at the age of 84. A family spokesman said he died quietly. <laughs> Ellen DeGeneres cries like a baby on national television when the adoption agency takes back her girlfriend, Portia de Rossi. I'm here with pro football legend Dan Marino. Well, you aren't the only athlete who's used Nutrisystem to lose weight and feel great. I understand that you found out about the program from another former football player. Now, is it true that you ate five times a day on the program? Oh, uh, we all did. Hey, do you believe in miracles? Well, our next Nutrisystem champion pulled one off in 1980 by scoring the winning goal to beat the Russians in hockey. If you're sick of feeling fat and tired, if you want to be that guy you once were, then you should give Nutrisystem a try. As far as, of course, the uh, possible spread of the Ebola virus. Now, I know it's a dangerous disease, but I have to tell you, I really think that the internet and the TV coverage of it has been a little over the top and insane. Oh, it just seems crazy. I agree completely. It's been totally over the top. <laughs> We interrupt with a special edition of CNN's Instant Reaction. Good evening. It's time for CNN's Instant Reaction. I'm your host, Erica Morton. The big story out of Burbank, California. A man has sneezed. This footage was shot just moments ago. The CDC isn't delaying this time. They've learned from their mistakes and are already responding.
They are covering the man in a completely airtight containment unit. And now let's go live to Dr. Frederick Miller of Mount Sinai Hospital in Los Angeles. Dr. Miller, here's what we know. A man has sneezed. Well, Erica, lots of questions here with this one. You know, how far did those projectiles go? You know, it's a pretty scary situation. As you can see, he didn't cover his mouth, and it looked like a pretty hard sneeze to me. Okay, I, I hate to interrupt, but we do have new information. The man's name is Andrew Reichter. He, he's evidently a co-host of a talk show on, we believe, QVC. Well, uh, well, wherever he works, the question is, who has Mr. Reichter been in contact with over the past 48 hours? For those questions and more, we go to an eyewitness who is apparently in the vicinity. The man who hosts the QVC show, Mr. Conrad O'Briam. <clears throat> Hello, Mr. O'Briam. It's, it's Conan O'Brien on TBS. Okay, thank you. Now, um, Mr. Urbino, in addition to yourself, <laughs> how many people do you think have recently come in contact with the patient? I, I don't even think Andy's sick. I mean, some of us have allergies this time of year. Yeah, but... well, just to be clear, by Andy, you mean Mr. Reichter? Yeah, Mr. Reichter, yeah. Has Andy been in contact with anyone? Andy's really not here much. He doesn't even come to rehearsal, so... Oh. So welcome back everyone to the Simply Central Show. We are talking to Erica Schaefer. And before the break, we were talking about, unfortunately, bullying that turns into harassment. And so you've seen a lot of that in the news and we were specifically talking about why women don't report it. And when you don't report it, then what happens? Do you change your behavior? And we wanna make sure we touch on a couple more things there. We don't want you to feel like you were left without some additional tips. So, Erica, so we were talking about the whole sexual harassment thing, and I kind of shared that I had been harassed. And then we were also kind of transitioning in the break. See, you guys didn't get yeah. to see that. Yeah, we were talking about all kinds of stuff in the break. And we were talking about the different things that people can do mm -hmm. to kind of address that. And so tell me about some of the things that you would suggest. Well, you know, I think, and this has always been the case for young actors and actresses who are in LA, New York, wherever, mm -hmm. you really have to be cautious about where you meet people. First yeah. and foremost, you have to really protect yourself. And I'll tell you, I've never booked a job in a hotel room. There you, you know? go. Um, I, but no one should be blamed for going to a meeting in a hotel room either, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, or they shouldn't go by themselves. Right. It's, and I don't, I don't even want to qualify female or male, or male. Oh, you just shouldn't go by to yourself. Going yeah. or hotel rooms um, alone mm -hmm. isn't good. Yeah. Just because uh, a lot of people are being um, brought up now and they're yeah. being brought up doesn't mean this kind of behavior is going to stop. That's true. So I think just to be careful and cautious when you're young in any business. Yeah. You know, you meet in an office. You yeah. meet with other people around. Mm -hmm. You meet during office hours. Yeah. Um, if there's anything about dinner or a mm. hotel or meeting in a bar, then I would always suggest someone who's young and starting out yeah. uh, reschedule. Ask, is, is there a way I can meet you um, during lunch tomorrow? Yeah. You know? That's a good um, point. Not, not at night, not after hours. Yeah. I, and and I, I know a lot of young people feel obligated to meet. Because they want to make it. Yeah. And they, this could be the big break. Right. And, you know, everyone else's schedule is busy, so I've mm -hmm. got to fit in. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's... So my biggest, you know, what breaks my heart is for uh, people who are starting out in any business to feel that they have to succumb to anyone who's more powerful right. than they are. Absolutely. Well, and then there is no one person that has your destiny in their hand. Mm -hmm. So that one opportunity, it should be something that makes you feel good. The door should be opened properly for you because I feel like when an opportunity is for you, it feels good all around. It feels good. You yeah. Know, listen to your instincts. If yeah. your instincts are telling you something's wrong, don't go. Don't go. In anything. In anything. Walking down a street that's dark. Yes. Anything. anything. And it yeah. is it is that conscious. You need to mm -hmm. use your conscience, your conscience so that you can kind of navigate through what's good and what's bad. I will tell you uh, that 
even in this space for different opportunities with television and things like that. And I've said, oh, well, great. I'd love to have a meeting. I'll bring my producer. Right. And then the conversation totally changes. changes yeah. yeah. So to me, when, when you hear those things, you know someone's intentions. Mm -hmm. And you should run from those things. You should run from those people. Right. Yeah. Because well, yeah, yeah. it will come up again. And to bring that up, you know, in professional, mm -hmm. in the professional world of being an actor, we are never in a room with just one person auditioning. Oh, well, there you go. Um, and that's been kind of a set rule for the 20 years that I've been in this business. Yeah. Uh, there's always two people in the room. I mean, granted, there might just be the one camera operator and he's yeah. running the show, but it's a commercial audition. Usually you're going in with another actor. Mm -hmm. It's not salacious in those situations. Yeah. Um, but nine times out of ten, there's more than one person in the room. Yeah. And who sets those rules? Um, apparently our union set those rules a long okay. time ago. It doesn't mean that they're being followed okay. always. But they're, even back in the 90s when I started, um, you could call SAG mm -hmm. and press, I don't know, extension 2 if you're being harassed on set. Yeah. I don't know how many people actually would call and press 2 when they're yeah. on set. Because the problem is you're on set. Yeah. You don't have the privacy to talk. That's true. You know? Yeah. Um, it's just like any HR line in corporate. Mm -hmm. Most people feel like, is it really anonymous? I don't know. Yeah, you don't and want to lose your job. Yeah, you don't. It's a fine line. Yeah. You have to make adjustments where you can, be safe where you can. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you feel like you're in a dangerous situation, you just, yeah. you don't continue to put yourself there. It was good That's as the most you learn thing. all these lessons, and then yes. as you get older, you're wiser. Yes! You know? But yes. if only, you know, when you're starting out, you have that strength. Yeah. Well, for, the young, for the young folks, we're telling them now, so take heed. We really would yeah. like you to avoid some of the things that we've had to experience. So now let's talk about some of the really good stuff because yeah. I mean, that's just one aspect of, you know, what happens in the world. And we know that those types of things happen all over. You're an actress though, and you've done so many great projects. Let's talk about one of your greatest projects. What, one that just pops out to you as an amazing experience. Rather than it being a big project, it was the most amazing experience. Okay. And it was probably, oh my God, one of my first movies um, 19 years ago, I guess. I can't believe time goes by that quickly. I know. But in the movie, a little tiny little film called Catalina Trust. And so you were about five at the time. Yeah. And <laughs> I don't know, there was something, sometimes kismet happens where the director, the producer, the cast, the crew, we all just become gel. really, truly a family yeah. Yeah. and gel. And it also happens when you're on location. When you're not mm. on location, then you don't gel so much. When you're mm. on location, you really become a family because yeah. you're, you know, everyone's away from home. Okay. We're all staying in the same hotel. Yeah. You know, we all eat together, work together all day. Yeah. Sing karaoke at night, you know, all that fun <laughs> stuff. But that movie in particular was really a beautiful uh, blessing. Yeah. And I think for all of us. And, um, you know, just from top to bottom. Yeah. And everywhere, everywhere in between, it was really a great experience. So some of those independent films tend to be really close to my heart. Yeah. And, um, but TV-wise, I've had so many great experiences working on some really wonderful sets like Mad Men yeah. and um, Dexter. Oh, that's and Scandal's a... been an amazing experience. Uh, I'm glad you segued to Scandal because Dexter, I don't know, that was kind of like a... Oh, I, yeah, after I had my um, baby, I couldn't watch Dexter. Yeah, I'm like, wait, what is happening <laughs> on the show? I didn't watch the show. It's just that I saw some... I, I ran across an episode and I was like, what is happening? It was just kind of. I wasn't murdered or anything, but um, <laughs> right. I've been murdered on many shows. And yeah, it's funny when you're the person who ends up in a pool of blood, you know, and you're laying there for hours, and they're trying to adjust the lights. Yeah, do you have to do that retake? It's like, yeah, is yeah. she really dead? Oh, I think I saw her twitch. <laughs> there was one movie I did where. Um, Daniel Baldwin played my husband, and he shot me in the stomach in our kitchen. Um. And I, you know, I fell down in the in the kitchen, and he had this big monologue, you know, over me. And at one point, one of the takes, I started <laughs> laughing because he just went off on some other tangent. Oh, so you know his lines. Right. And so I, my <laughs> body like gyrated a little bit, but the director loved his performance so much that he's like, I don't care. It doesn't matter if you moved. You know, because you, you weren't 100% dead at that point, so a little twitch, that's okay. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Playing dead has been, it, it's interesting how you have to really hold your breath. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I've been, um, I've been choked. Oh. I've been thrown out of car. I've be oh, I was beaten over the head on silk stockings by a ventriloquist dummy in a graveyard. 
this is all acting head. stuff. This is not real yeah. domestic <laughs> violence or anything like that. So all the ways that I've died on camera. Um, yeah, so funny. It's just, it's been. I'm trying to think. Oh, and now that I've been the one who's attempted to kill people as well. Really? Yeah, on Hawaii Five O. Oh, okay. Um, I tried. So you're dangerous, is what you're saying. <laughs> so let me just, because some of that stuff could be carrying it over into real life. Really, really. really. <laughs> we should have checked your bag before you came on set. <laughs> so you're on Scandal mm -hmm. as a news anchor, mm -hmm. and you're like popping in yeah. every scene. My official title is Anchor Julia. They haven't oh. given me a last name, but at least, you know, I'm Anchor Julia. You know what? Because they kind of yeah. do that now. I think I'm just going to take off simply and just go with. Yeah, just Julia. She just, doesn't need a last She doesn't need that. That's um, the new wave of news yeah. anchors. So thank you for <laughs> ushering us in. So people may not have realized that. I mean, you are like on every episode because there's always a scandal. There's always a scandal. Yeah. Always a scandal and it needs to be reported on. Yeah. Yeah. So you're one of those people. Fake news. That's what it's all fake news. Well, you're drumming up some yeah. stuff. Um, in comparison to the script, it's usually pretty correct, but yeah. <laughs> so how is it working with Kerry Washington, mm -hmm. Shonda Rhimes? Those yeah, are the folks amazing. that people, and of course, all of the other folks that are on there. And I, yeah. I mean, I could go down the entire list. I love the show. Yeah, and I have to tell you that that set, that crew, mm -hmm. that work environment is mm -hmm. great. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of female power, mm -hmm. um, a lot of female directors, mm -hmm. always, which I never am directed by a woman in this town. It's really? very rare. You know what? That's very rare. But in um, Shonda Rhimes gets a lot of female directors. Yeah. It's fantastic. I can't, I, girl I, yeah, power. Girl yes. Power. I love that. Well, you know, she's forging a lot of new space and you're starting to see women emerging in a whole bunch of areas. Yeah. Just a lot more than we have. I think there's a new confidence. Mm -hmm. I think there's a new uh, collaboration going on with women. We haven't really celebrated as much, and yeah. we should. We should celebrate the ability to come together, partner, and do things, and to show up and support each other. So I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, no, it's great. And I've also worked on, um, I did a pilot uh, for Shonda Rhimes called Inside the Box, another political mm. show way before Scandal. Mm. And then I was on private practice. So, uh, you oh, know, yeah. we're in that, she um, and all of her producers tend to be very loyal. Yeah. And mm. a lot of the same people work on the same shows. Right. Yeah. Well, you're loyal because obviously it's good people that you're working yeah. with. Yeah. Right. That's pretty. Have you had to? Have you ever brought your daughter to set? Because I know they bring their kids. I know. I would love to. I a lot of times when I'm shooting, it's when she's at school mm -hmm. or I'm late at night. Yeah. So I would love to bring her. I'd love for her to watch. I think you know, uh, Family Time, for yeah. instance, the other show that I work on. That's a set where everybody brings their kids. Oh, so yeah. What happens? Because sometimes. You know, they're not. They're everyone will be happy to see a child, but not yeah. everyone's open that you brought your kid to work. <laughs> right, especially when your kid's not well. It was Johnny, th th right. th that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, you don't have to worry about that one because <laughs> your daughter is handling arbitrations yeah. and mediation. Yeah, she so she's so. ten now, going on twenty. So yeah. Exactly. I see how that is. <laughs> so make sure that you check out Erica Schaefer. She's on Family Time. She's also on Scandal. And oh, by the way, it is the last season of Scandal. So just in case you're not sure exactly where she was in the scenes, she's all over the place. And we're going to show you a couple of those too. You might want to go back and watch the entire, I don't know how many seasons is that? Seven seasons of Scandal. You'll probably enjoy it anyway. And check her out. Her work is amazing. We'll be right back after the break. I count six hostages. They seem unharmed. Unclear at this time how many more might be inside. After a vicious attack, Senator Sterling is widely considered to be the lion of the hill, a crucial vote for the White House's highly touted equal pay bill. The situation at the White House looks to be under control as Secret Service clears what's left of the scene. A stark contrast to the events of earlier today when an unauthorized... For Pete's sake, they're recapping. Any moment now, President-elect Melly Grant will be making a statement from the White House briefing room. Let's take you there live. 
Senator Sally Langston won the New Hampshire Republican primary Tuesday with 98% of the precincts reporting. Most attribute the voters' change of heart to new allegations that Governor Grant's wife is involved in an extramarital affair. Finally, movement today in the 100-plus day standoff between student activist Steve Candles and Vermont officials over the removal of a memorial dedicated to controversial Revolutionary War General Raymond Sist. Rutland Mayor Susan Shumpert has agreed to a sit-down with Steve after the visit from former President Fitzgerald Grant re-engaged public enthusiasm in Steve's cause. In other news, Congressman Shaw, seemingly undaunted by the media attention his sex tape is generating, today taking the opportunity to talk about his education reform plans. Political pundits are loving Shaw's Bob and Weave performance, saying this is exactly what you do when your candidate gets caught with his hand in the proverbial cookie jar. Tomorrow, as the White House takes over the National Gallery to begin setting up for what is, without a doubt, the toughest ticket in town, President Grant's 50th birthday celebration. Many of the president's key supporters... Representative Caldwell might have thought he'd be the one making headlines with a big endorsement from President Grant, but never underestimate America's love of a Cinderella story. Stealing the spotlight was Caldwell's date to the gala affair. Word from Capitol Hill today is that President Grant doesn't have the vote she needs for her proposed resolution authorizing military intervention in Bashran. Now, the setback is a blow to the Grant administration, which had hoped to reinstate ousted President Fareed Rashad and renew negotiations on a nuclear treaty with Bashran's neighboring country of Dakal. If you're just joining us, you've probably already heard a drone has entered White House airspace just minutes after the president-elect arrived there to announce her new pick for VP. So welcome back to the Simply Central Show. We are having a great time here on the set talking with Erica Schaefer. And so we're going to invite you to like, share, and follow on social media at Simply Central. Check out this conversation. I wish we could give you some behind the scenes footage because we are laughing it up in here. I <laughs> can't tell you about all the stuff we're talking about. We will <laughs> get back to some of the work that Erica has been doing. And we didn't talk about commercials. Mm -hmm. so. Uh, I'm going to start off with the one that you probably did some time ago. Mm -hmm. KY Jelly. KY. Really? I mean, that was such a, a blockbuster for me, <laughs> I have to tell you. <laughs> I mean, I did, oh gosh, probably five. It was a huge campaign, and I tell everyone I bought my house off of KY. Oh, I did. my gosh. See? I, and I'm, I, you know, I'm happy. I'm ha the warming gel. The warming gel. <laughs> right, because it keeps you warm. Mm, yeah. I don't think that's what it's yeah. used for. <laughs> <laughs> but at the time, they sent me cases of it. Really? And, um, the cases. So as, you know, I'd pass it out like party favors. You know, hey, you know, here you go. This yeah. is a gift. Here yeah. you go with yeah. a little tissue paper. Casting directors. It. Like, it was always a good laugh. Yeah. That is so fun. Now, what about your most recent Yeah, commercial? well, I've done... Are probably every product you can imagine and recently I have a 7-Up with two chains nah. and that was a blast we yeah. were on a yacht and I'm on his lap in a gold lame cutout that's what we're doing <laughs> that's what we're doing Erica this is on the lap just yeah. on the lap yeah um, <laughs> And so, you know, at my age, I'm on the lap of a rapper with, oh, a, with a bathing suit on. I'm like, really? Yeah, you know? what's happening? Yeah. Um, I'm, but I'm it is funny to... because, you know, I'm the quintessential, like, all-American mom, middle yeah. America, and, you know, the juxtaposition. That's what, what that's made what the comedy. Was. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. You guys are going to get a chance to see that. Don't worry. Yeah, I have that for you. I can get you that one. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> We're going to make sure that they get to see that. That's, that is hilarious. Okay, so we've talked about your work. Mm -hmm. we, we know the type of person you are. We know what you stand for. Tell me about some of the causes that you advocate for. Yeah, gosh. I advocate, you know, maybe I don't belong to any particular group, but I've always advocated for speaking up for people mm -hmm. who need it. Yeah. Um, helping someone, being, yeah. living in a world of, of kindness and gratitude. Yeah. I have a funny story for you, and this happened this week. I saw a man, a blind man, an older man. Um, I'm, I'm in traffic, it's on Venice Boulevard. He's got his cane, and, and he's feeling that it's the street, and, but there's no step down. And I'm like, oh my God, he's going to fall, mm. you know? So I had to keep going on Venice. So I made a right and a right and a right, and I came back around, I parked, 
and he had made his way off the curb and I said, excuse me, sir, do you need any help? He goes, I know I'm in the street right now. I know it. And I'm like, okay, well, do you want me to help you get out of the street? Or are you okay? And he goes, I'm standing, aren't I? <laughs> then I thought, okay. I tried to help. Yeah. He doesn't want it, but you know, at least I pulled over and tried to help. Absolutely. And that's all I can do. That's if, the if only he doesn't want part. it, then yeah. that's okay. <laughs> It's kind of it wild. So no, I will tell you, well, when we first arrived here in Anaheim, I had the uh, pleasure of having dinner with one of my girlfriends. And I was coming into the restaurant over here in downtown Disney, mm -hmm. and there were some homeless people there, and they were asking for food and things and, and money. And I said, did you guys want something to eat? And they were like, yes, absolutely. I said, well, I figured because they had been in that area, and there were several restaurants right. that maybe they knew what right. they would like, and right. I would just get it. And my grandmother always said, you know, when someone asks for food, you're supposed to feed them. Mm -hmm. So no worries there. So I said, okay, do you know what you want? And the guy tells me, and I thought this was just hilarious. He said, well, I'm not really sure of the menu. I did just have my wisdom teeth pulled, though. So I don't want anything spicy and nothing fried. And can you make sure it has a lot of protein in it? And I was thinking to myself. <laughs> mashed potatoes with like some mashed chicken. What is happening? What You're is suddenly happening? taking orders. Right. And the crazy part is, is that when I was looking at the menu, that's exactly what I was doing. I was like, oh, no, that's too spicy. That's too spicy. Oh, oh it doesn't have enough. Chew. Is there yeah. any meat in there? That's that chicken. Yeah, I was doing that. I was just surprised. That's funny. Like, I've never seen someone have so many different specifications when you're giving to them. So, yeah, that was kind of maybe only in California. It was I don't know, but I, I love that I find humor in every situation, yeah. though. That's yeah. for sure. I mean, you can't write the stuff that you see out in real life. No, <laughs> you you cannot. I tell you. And while we're dining out here in downtown Disney, there's like no healthy food. Like I know, I know. Yeah, I'm trying to find. I think we found a Jamba Juice that now has acai bowls oh. and. So I was like, okay, well, yeah, that, or you've got to take out, you go to the restaurant, you got to take everything out. No bread, no cheese, yeah, no, the, yeah. all that good stuff. And I know that you are a healthy eater. Uh, focusing on a whole food diet, I think it keeps you young. Yeah. I think it keeps your body working better. And I, I really subscribe to that. Yeah. And I, you know, with so much cancer and so many diseases, yeah. I just really think there's a lot you can do with your diet to avoid a lot of problems, yeah. health problems. A lot of ailments, and this is a good point. Especially cholesterol and diabetes. Yeah. And, you know, all of that can be um, uh, remedied with diet. Right, with the right foods. And mm -hmm. we had the opportunity to, I had the opportunity to listen to Christy Brinkley actually today. Mm -hmm. um, both of you look amazing. Now, Christy Brinkley is 63. Yeah, she looks so it's processed hard to food. Do. What Proce is processed food? Well, anything, I guess, that comes in a box. Mm -hmm. So your cereal, all your snacks, yeah. all your chips. I know. I and know. I love chips and guacamole. I mean, that's I my know. favorite thing in the world. Yeah, I yeah. Know. I love some guacamole, too. <laughs> guacamole is really good for you, though. It is. Just don't put too much salt in it. Or maybe use right. some pink Himalayan salt. Oh, pink Himalayan salt is yes, great. That's, yeah. So, so just some little tidbits for folks. Yeah, because especially for young that. girls. Um, you know, girls are just developing really early. And it's, it's the hormones. because of the hormones mm -hmm. and the food. Yeah. And, you know, for young girls, I just want them to feel empowered, not only that their body is their own, but that they do have control over what they put in their body, too. Yes. And if yes. they could be, if they could educate themselves more on, you know, what they're eating. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's okay. Of course it's okay. You want to have a cheat day. You know, you, don't, you want to enjoy life. Yeah. But, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, I mean, do you have enough vegetables in your diet? Yeah. Is there enough color on your plate? You know? Yeah. Is that how you teach your daughter? I try, you know. She um, she's funny. She does like chicken, and I think it's important for her for her protein, yeah. you know. But she eats a lot of vegetables. Um, mm. She likes rice, uh, mm. you know. Which you want to make sure you're actually buying rice because some rice is plastic. <laughs> That's the crazy thing. I know. Even I know. even though I was doing really well with it. I didn't read labels of certain things because yeah. I just thought that yeah. it is what it's supposed and to it's be, not. and it's yeah. not. It's not. I even um, looked at the back of popcorn, and I thought, I thought popcorn was just the little kernels. Like that's all it is. 
No, it's a lot more than that. Unless right. you unless you actually buy just the little kernels, mm -hmm. then it's just that. I mean, just down to that, looking at the labels for for people to start with where where can they start to be a little healthier? Mm -hmm. I think just look at the labels. Look at the stuff that's in the food and is it something that's grown from the ground? And I think we have an opportunity now where we have so many more options. Where when I was growing up, you know, it was a lot of very processed food, a yeah. lot of um, bad snacks. Yeah. So I think we've learned from all of those mistakes and things, and and things are labeled where yeah. it never was before. Yeah. So, well, and some things aren't in the labels too. But we do have an opportunity now to really move forward and, and live a much healthier life. And we do. Learned a lot of really tough lessons about mm -hmm. you know what what uh, creates Parkinson's. Um, how do people mm. get Alzheimer's? You know, a lot yeah. of aluminum and metals that are in everything. You know? Yeah, it's kind of disheartening. But then again, you want to live your life, you want to have fun. Yeah. And you think about the people that live into their 90s and they've done everything. They've eaten everything bad, they've smoked, and so it's really it's really luck of the draw. Yeah. You, know? you, can, you can still do some things You can things still do some things will, to prevent. You can. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, my cheat days, I'm not a real sweets person. Mm. But get me near any chips, you know, the kettle chips. Yeah. Yeah. You know? All of those, but at least the nacho the, chips, we have that in common. <laughs> so I'm salty. Are I'm you? Salty. It doesn't even have to have the salt. I had nachos the other day, and it mm. was nachos with chicken, and it had some beans, mm -hmm. and it had some pico, and then it had some cilantro, and then it just, I said, pile the guacamole yeah, yeah, on. Yeah. Because that was makes it the at nachos. the end of a long day? No, it was lunch. See, I can't, do, I, you know, my daughter teases me because I came home one day, I was at a meeting for an infomercial I was doing, and I ate a bean and cheese burrito, and I swear to God, it messed me up for days. <laughs> and I told my daughter, oh I said, my you, know what? No, you know how mom loves her, her black beans, but I can't do it during the day, and I can't do it if I have a meeting, an audition, nothing. That's hilarious. I know. And so now hilarious. I look at black beans a little bit differently. You know? Yeah, yeah. They do help to move the <laughs> move system. Move things out, but just, yeah, just, At yeah, the wrong just, time, yeah. yeah wrong it's at the time, wrong time. Yeah, yeah. Like the cramping, the whole, the whole thing. <laughs> so when I do order beans, she's like, are you sure? Really? Because yeah, kids do good. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we will, <laughs> we will be right back. Make sure to like, share, and follow. We are talking to Erica Schaefer and the things that she does to keep herself healthy and building a better her. So, we'll see you in a second. You know 7-Up goes great with punch, but try mixing it with fresh cut fruit and sangria. It's the perfect drink for when you go raving in the desert. Like that time you told your wife you were at the regional sales conference. Wait, what? what? Remember last March with Steve? <laughs> or use it to make a white wine spritzer. Perfect for hanging out with 2 chains. I love your rap music. I have a helicopter. Ooh. We should be going. You don't like boats? I like boats, and I love all these 7-Up mixed drinks. 7-Up, mix it up a little. We are back with Erica Schaefer, and we are inviting you to like, share, follow at Simply Central on all the social media. We've had an amazing conversation, and we've dropped a lot of tidbits for you so that you can build a better you. Now, we don't want to forget to get back to the pursuit, yeah. right? So we were talking about you being an actress. Mm -hmm. Is that where it started? Yeah, ever since I was a little girl, I would just dream about being an actor. And you know what's funny is, um, I don't know if it's maybe a female empowerment thing, but we call ourselves actors, and I don't know if that yeah. if that makes male actors upset or not. But it's yeah. kind of funny because we, um, I think we started changing it maybe ten or fifteen years ago, mm -hmm. maybe because actress sounded cheap, <laughs> like miss, <laughs> like, know, mistress. like mistress. <laughs> um, I didn't even think about that. I know it's funny, but. Uh, it is a gender specific job, but however, I do audition against men all the time. Yeah. I can't even tell you. Sometimes they're not sure if they want a man or a woman. Yeah. Well, and sometimes they probably don't want to have to change it. We need an actress. Just put actor in the Yeah, covers just say everyone. ask for actors yeah. and, they'll, and they'll show up. Yeah. Um, but getting back to, yes, I've always wanted to be an actor, and ever since I was probably six or seven years old. Mm -hmm. Um, I did not grow up in Los Angeles. I grew up in San Diego. So mm -hmm. I wasn't, you know, there wasn't any um, real industry, at least my parents didn't know how to get yeah. me in. 
So I was in the California Ballet Company from the time I was six, and performing was my life. It mm -hmm. was everything. And I just knew that one day I'd figure out how to be an actor. I like so that. So I got a scholarship as a dancer mm -hmm. to go to undergrad. Mm. And while I was there, I auditioned for a play, and I was the only dancer that cast in the as an actor in a play, and mm -hmm. which was a big deal because usually they really character you know categorized yeah. us. Well, you're a dancer. You're an actor, you're a singer. Yeah. So it was kind of cool to jump on over. Yeah. And so I was able to prove myself doing that play at 18 years old, and I was allowed to join the acting program, yeah. which is what I wanted to do. Yeah. And I just was so thrilled and just loved studying. I love the craft. Um, I love what we do is, as actors, we really delve deep into the psychology of the human being and the yeah. human spirit. Yeah and taking on character um, we do in a very like mathematical way mm -hmm. um, just how we all memorize our lines mm -hmm. and go beat by beat um, it's basically understanding the human condition in a very scientific way yeah and being able to repeat that over and over and over again and going right into it mm -hmm. i didn't study um, method i studied stanislavski so mm -hmm. i don't need to be a homeless woman to play a homeless woman, you know? Um, okay. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need to um, live in that character at craft service. Okay. And I think that's really important because I think you could possibly make yourself crazy mm -hmm. if you're not able to step away. Right. Because, um, you know, there's scenes where, you know, the times I've been murdered, the yeah. times I've um, been Those hurt. Those are dark places. Um, I played a, um, you know, a, an abused wife, you know, that you you have to be able to walk away from it and mm -hmm. go to lunch with everybody. Yeah, and be like, oh, we're done with that. You know, now. so Erica's it is back. a craft, and it is uh, something that needs to be studied. Mm -hmm. um, Would you consider that work? Or? It is work. Yeah. 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 Because people say that when you do what you love, right? You've wanted to do this all your life, that you don't work a day in your life. But it's work that I love doing. Yeah. I guess I, it is work to do the work. Yeah. You People know? have to know that. Like, yeah, just you're not going to just be able to show up on set there and everything's going to be great. Yeah. You know, and um, I think a lot of people get lucky because they're the right look at the right time. But mm -hmm. for longevity, you have to be trained. Yeah. You have to understand what you're doing. Yeah. Um, you have to be able to be directed, and mm -hmm. I'm directed by different people every single mm -hmm. week. You know, That's I don't, a good one. I don't just work with one boss. I have yeah. a new boss every time I'm on set. Yeah, so every you job. have to be able to work with a number of different people. You have, you have to yes. be able to be coached, because even at this point... You have to keep your mouth shut yeah. and take direction. I like yeah. that. Yeah, Because you're not, not doing there, everything perfectly. I'm not there to direct, and I'm not there to write it. My job is to memorize what the writers wrote, Yeah and um, create the character the way I see it and be directed. Yeah. Um, I think where actors go wrong is when they get com combative mm. with the direction. Mm -hmm. You have to understand where we're all at. Yeah. You know, the director is the ringleader of this mm -hmm. circus. Yeah. Um, suggestions might be well, might be well, but not often. Yeah. <laughs> and when they're not, be, be okay with that. And just be okay with it. The one thing I that. learned, because I then I went to grad school, so I have a bachelor's and a master's in acting. Mm -hmm. In grad school, the best thing that we all did to each other when we would be sitting getting our notes after doing our Shakespearean run through of whatever play we're doing, is there was always one kid that couldn't take the note, and under our breath, <clears throat> take the note, <laughs> take the note. You <laughs> just take the note. Just do it already. Take the note. Yeah. And it really. Sometimes it, it's a lot of self-reflection, like you mm -hmm. think you're doing it right, but maybe you're not. Yeah. And maybe, and here's where a tool comes, do an opposite. Pick an opposite way of approaching that scene. Yeah. And it works. Yeah. Because there's more than one way to do something. There's more than, there's a million ways to gild that lily. Yeah. And um, there's many tools in which to give the director many different varieties of ways. Yeah but only if you've studied how to do that. Yeah. Otherwise, you only have one way because that's all you know. Yeah. And I think that goes with everything in life. Absolutely. Um, I went to um, a speech with Eckhart Tolle and Deepak uh, Chopra Love last year. Love Eckhart Tolle. And he, uh, Deepak was talking about how as human beings, we are verbs. And mm -hmm. that's exactly what we're taught as actors. We're, mm -hmm. we're verbs. Yeah. We, we, we grab, we punch, we push, we pull, we caress. Yeah. And, and you like music, I will score that mm -hmm. throughout a piece, you know, depending upon what the, what the scene is. And as a meditator my, and a yogi, my job is to get rid of all my verbs. Yeah. To not push, punch, kick. 
Yeah, I like because that. Because that's what human beings do. So it's really nice to understand that as a human condition, we live as, a, as many verbs right. constantly. Yeah. In order to live a sane life, you want to get rid of all the verbs yeah. as much as you can. Yeah. And that's where you find peace. So, so. I live in a world where I create verbs and I, I utilize verbs yeah. in a more um, accelerated manner because mm -hmm. otherwise it's not interesting to watch. Mm -hmm. But in my life, I try to really get rid of my verbs. I hear you on that. That's where that peace comes mm -hmm. in. So is yoga something that you have used as like a spiritual practice to like build a better you? To build get, a better me, yeah, make me a better mom, a better wife, a much better center. actor. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yoga makes you a better actor? Because in the craziness of shooting on camera, things work really, really fast. Oh yeah. There's no time to breathe and not everyone is very nice. Mm -hmm. So in order to learn how to breathe. <laughs> not everyone's nice. Not everyone's nice. Yeah. Um, people are in a hurry. They're dealing with their own stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the good thing about meditation and yoga is that within the midst of all that chaos, right. I still have lines I have to do. Mm -hmm. I still have marks I have to hit. I can't, you know, I got to shut out the noise. Right. The noise is all around us no matter what we do. <laughs> no matter what we do. But I got to yeah. stay focused on what I need to do. Yeah. You know? So and staying that's focused. Helped. Staying focused, staying grounded. Yeah. Staying grateful. Yes. Yeah, well, because in yoga, the thing, one of the biggest things is you have to be still. You have to be still. It's the one thing that we're running all over, right. trying to, you know, right. become all of these verbs. And then in yoga, you just have to be. And also in yoga, it's all about the breath. So mm -hmm. the breath initiates the movement. Yeah. Where we are often, especially living in Los Angeles, moving without breathing. Mm -hmm. Our breath is trying to catch up. Yeah. Yoga teaches you the breath will facilitate the movement. Mm -hmm. And hard poses, uh, there's like 800 and some yoga poses in the world. Hard poses represent life. Yeah. Can you breathe through it? Mm -hmm. Can you hold it? and breathe through it. Yeah. Can you just push on through and, and be okay with being uncomfortable? Yeah. Be okay with being uncomfortable, which is life, mm -hmm. right? Uh, it's the pushing through, the uncomfortable uncomfortability, right. because for, for me, I mean, I would say I've had a whole bunch of uncomfortable moments just here in 2017. Yeah. But just here in this week it has been very uncomfortable. When you push through though, then you realize you are already right. able to do those things. Now they're no longer uncomfortable moments that you have to push through. They're things that are behind you. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and they become so much easier when you have tools in order to breathe. And I really encourage young people, especially young pe people who have had trauma in their lives, yeah. um, abusive households. Uh, I practice transcendental meditation and they offer that a lot in schools. The David Lynch Foundation mm. uh, brings that to schools. It's just, uh, teaches anybody just to sit, close your eyes yeah. and have one mantra and breathe. Yeah. And it, it, it's as simple as that, not mired in anything else. And yeah. I think uh, the younger kids learn how to do that. I mean, I didn't start doing yoga until I was in my thirties and I, I cried in my first yoga class because I thought, why haven't I been here yet? But I yeah. wasn't ready. Yeah. You know? I like that. And it'll come to you and all these practices will come to you when, when you're ready. And sometimes you have to hit the wall and hit the bottom mm -hmm. to be ready. Yeah. And that's with everything in yeah. life. Absolutely. So are there any projects that you have coming up that you want to yeah. share with everyone? Well, um, Scandal is finishing its seventh season. I know, I know. And um, it's we, should have a, we should have a moment of but silence. But one good thing is that some of the camera guys on Scandal wrote a really cool independent film, and I'm in it. I'm okay. the lead. I play, uh, and it, and it kind of harkens back to a character. It's a, a woman, just in a nutshell. I can't give out too much, but she pushes through. Mm -hmm. She uh, will do anything to make a deal happen and finds herself with nothing. Hmm. And I think that's really a good metaphor in life because, you know, don't take for granted what you have and yeah. the people around you and don't try to skirt the system and oh, cheat yeah. the system and get around things yeah. and it'll never work out. It won't. And you may think it's working out in that moment, in the end, that karma. Right. That karma is going to come back to you. So we're going to be looking for you in this project that oh, we don't have a time. name for. 
<laughs> there is a na- yeah, but anyway, the the camera guys want to have a project as soon as Scandal ends in March, so oh. we're gonna hopefully maybe do it in April, and maybe some other Scandal cast members will also be in it. Okay. And um, and family then time. Family Time. Yes. Is we're starting our sixth season. Okay. In the spring, and okay. that's a great great show and family programming. Um, which is much needed yeah, in this it, world. It is much needed. Family programming where the whole family can sit down and yeah. watch. Yeah. Well, we have talked about so many things today. The last thing that I'd like to know is what is the most important thing that you've done to build a better you? The most important thing I've done, I think, listen. Mm-hmm. Listen to other people. Yeah. Um, just take time and listen and really hear what they have to say and mm-hmm. their side. Yeah. Um, and the ability to admit that I don't know it all. Yeah. And maybe I was wrong. And if I was wrong, thank you for showing me. Yeah. You know? Um, and the ability to just really enjoy the moment. Yeah. And just be present. Be present. Yeah. yeah. And that this is okay. Yeah. You know, a lot of people, we've got our phones and we're doing all kinds of other right. things. You can't listen. Yeah. And you definitely can't be present mm-hmm. when you've got all of those distractions. So very great. Yeah. Very great lessons that you've shared. We've shared so much on today's show. So I am super, super, super Aww. excited that you joined us Thank today. Thank you so much for having me. No, you are welcome. So <laughs> for all of you out there, you got to go back and look at the show just in case you missed something because there were a lot of lessons. We didn't have a chance to go back through all of them today. Just know that each and every one of them are meant to help you become better. That's what we're here for. We will see you next time on The Simply Central Show.